question around it so do you know why the term iphone or ipod or imac or ipad what is that i means why i so there is no meaning to it i think it was uh, september 16 on 1 1997 Steve was appointed as an interim CEO. Uh, just to give a context, last week we talked how the transition of Steve's life happened, where he left Apple, got fired, and then found uh, Pixar, and you know bought Pixar and found Next, and then Next was brought back by Apple, and Steve made more more money, and then he also gave back the money to his team, and then uh, joined Apple back, and Apple was always his first love. and uh, steves was very very he was super visionary when it comes to technology and how the technology can change people's life and steves first love around the computer where he couldn't innovate was the lisa computer when apple from apple steve got fired okay. steve always had a vision that he wanted to make a computer uh, device which can make normal people's life easy and uh, very productive that's when he realized when he came back to apple uh, gil amelio who was the ceo of apple at that point of time uh, gil left the company the board of director of apple also offered him the role of a ceo in the initial journey when steve came back steve denied it he believed that uh, he should focus on things which is great at and he should allow people uh, to focus on things and work on things that people are great and very passionate about that's why he didn't go after position he rejected the offer uh, to become a ceo just after he came back to apple and in fact focused on the vision of steve strength is how to be super creative how to bring back apple to the right path and become a visionary and creative future and while working on those uh, spectrum steve also created a campaign called think different which is again present in google right now you can just google and check it out one of the best camp marketing campaign in uh, the world has ever seen right now and that created a huge identity shift of apple and uh, that's the whole shift of uh, people perspective towards apple started changing and the next challenge steve had is why while people had a different percep- perception right now how do i live up to the perception the biggest mistake i did was uh, uh, i created a really good vision of a technology but the products which we innovated and we brought back to the industry was really really poor quality and it was not working well and uh, that's where bill gates came that time he helped steve uh, with the contract of 5 years uh, bill gates and team wrote Microsoft Office for uh, Apple as well, and those are kind of settled down. And in fact, this is when CEO uh, when Steve came to this decision where he needed control of things, where his vision of the Lisa computer has to come reality. <coughs> the mistake what happened in the past was he was not having enough control across all the department to create the product he always always envisioned for, and the UI and the experience what customer would really want. that's when he decided he uh, let me become a interim ceo so that uh, the product which apple should work on i can take overall control of each and every department and that's when in 1997 he was given a title of interim ceo in uh, september 16 1997 and just after it close to a year which is august of uh, 2000 august of 1998 was the launch of first imac which was a tremendous hit Last year, before C, uh, before Steve was CEO, it was around uh, Apple lost around 1.4 billion dollar in losses, and just after the launch of product, Apple made a profit of around uh, 334, 309 million dollars to be precise. And that was the first success. People saw that Steve's presence and Steve's uh, creativity around the product gave huge leap for, ahead to the Apple. The next challenge came. Steve had a discussion with Mike Markello. If you remember, he had a discussion with board of director where he had to let go uh, one of the board of director, and he started thinking, "What else I can innovate? Uh, this is not enough. This is just making me uh, there for the industry, but something has to go really beyond." And uh, uh, Steve loved to discuss ideas with his team. Uh, he went to one of the chamber in Apple. Apple has a very secret chamber where uh, people discuss innovative ideas. and he still works with few sets of people who resonate and who think beyond about future as well so there was a guy called johnny ive uh, johnny ive uh, was a chief design officer at apple and they were coming up with something really innovative <laughs> steve went to the chapter in uh, in the uh, chamber and they started discussing about ideas and steve asked johnny ive hey what did you get it for me is the product ready and johnny just got surprised see we didn't tell me what to make what do you want 
and Steve shared, hey, I just gave you the design brief. Didn't you read it? They both laughed like, yeah, Steve, of course you gave a design brief. It just said, create something very, very new. <laughs> this is a design brief, what Steve gave to Johnny Ive. And they laughed uh, out of the design brief. And uh, Johnny generally resonates with Steve's vision. Steve's believed in simplicity. So Steve's, all the products you see was very simple and very, uh, you know, eye pleasing. It's like pop art pieces. The, all the products of Apple's are, it's like an art piece. And, uh, and Johnny also had a similar vision around the design. And Johnny was from London and he had a very tough childhood. So he believes he kind of resonated Steve's vision of around simplicity. And uh, that discussion went well. Johnny was working on a very innovative design where a uh, user can just scroll through a pad and then browse through multiple items. And that was a product, the design uh, meeting happened between them, which was the birth of iPod, the first version of iPod, where the screen was, there was a small screen, the first half of the screen has a small screen and the bottom of the screen had this uh, round uh, button where you can scroll and then you can play with all the music. So this is the first discussion they had and within I think few uh, meetings with the team, uh, the product came into reality and I think it was 2001 of August uh, uh, in the time frame where Apple launched the first iPod and definitely it was uh, Steve's uh, charming way to lure the audience. Uh, Steve came to the conference and then just uh, <laughs> pocketed <to> removed this <laughs> device and told, uh, we all love music. <laughs> And we all faced challenge around having just disposable devices out there. We had Sony, we have Walkman, all those times, which is just very bad looking and, and you can't even scroll through your music. And you can't even store huge list of music at that point of time. So Steve just uh, brings out the device and starts scrolling and it was, audience could see everything what Steve was doing. And uh, they're like amazed the kind of uh, innovation that uh, the company brought. And without giving much of information, Steve just played one song and closed it and then put the iPod in the pocket and just went out of the stage. <laughs> and I was like, what is it? Or kya hai? Or kya hai? And uh, th that's where the game changer of iPod's uh, future was. I think the moment it hit the market, it was the best seller Apple have ever had, in, including the iMac. And it was such a hit that Apple was in a different orbit altogether. All the company at that point of time were fighting around computing, computing, computers and all those stuff. Steve went into a different orbit. In fact, even the Bill Gates, who was kind of a competitor to uh, Apple at that point of time, Bill Gates was quite impressed with the iPod itself. In, uh, he, he quoted, in fact, telling that this is such a beautiful device. Isn't, isn't this available for uh, Microsoft as well? So that's where even uh, Bill Gates started to create a Zoom product and all this thing happened, but I won't go into the detail. But people were inspired about the innovation what Steve brought into the picture. And uh, this is the time frame Steve was at the highest of his peak. It was uh, I think the year of 2003 where iPod was really good and giving a lot of success. But Steve knew this is not enough. I think we have, we have to go beyond it. And iPod was one of the example. And uh, Steve has amazing ability to understand the industry and what how the millennials were reacting and millennials were approaching. And that's, that, that's what created another innovation around iTunes where all the multimedia started to come into one device where millennials like all of us at that uh, in those era where we wanted to listen music, watch videos, everything at one place. And uh, uh, one thing hit uh, that time that Steve had some uh, health report from a doctor telling that he had some kidney stones, you have to do some, some small surgery. Steve did that and he got a call in one of the morning. He told, doctor told See, there's some shadow around your pancreas. I think you need to look into it. Well, let's uh, do some tests and find out. She went to the doctor and uh, turned out to be it was a rare form of cancer. And that just hit him what just happened. And he realized it was very difficult for Steve to accept what just happened in terms of uh, health. And um, uh, Steve felt and believed that generally his thought of creativity and the challenging thought of status quo would also help him to cure the cancer as well. So Steve's wife gave him a recommendation here. He already found it. Doctor told him it is very early stage. If you just respond to it right now, if you just do a surgery, I think you would be fine. Uh, unfortunately, Steve uh, 
didn't agree to it. He was not able to accept it. And uh, Steve and his wife had a lot of arguments. His wife wanted him to get so as he please do it, please do it. And Steve, you know, is a aggressive. He doesn't listen. It went on to almost five, six months. Uh, Steve tried all the other way out, all preventive mechanism, eating supplements, good nutrition, yoga, everything he tried. And then he realized that he felt already that uh, you have no option, and if you want to survive, you have to do the surgery. Uh, luckily, after six, seven months, Steve uh, did have had the surgery, and things started becoming better. If he got his energy back, he felt I think I'm uh, better, and. This was something he kept everything private. Nobody out, nobody knew what was going through this uh, all this time, and uh, he also felt that if you tell this news to everyone, people will panic and Apple stocks will go down. All those things would happen. So let's keep things private. Uh, but the fundamental aspect why didn't he uh, do the surgery was he quoted to his wife telling, "Laurie, I don't want people to cut through me." I'm really scared. So uh, the fear of having a surgery was the only thing he didn't wanted to do it. But eventually he did. And these were the revelation in third phase of Steve, where he realized a few things. And in 2005, I think June 2005, uh, he gave a speech at Stanford. Uh, you can find the video in the Google as well again, where he thought to share something to all the students out there. And promoted heavily around. I think you all should watch the video. Really beautiful. Like he talks, do not compromise in your life. Do whatever you want, what you love. Don't step back. You have only one life, and when you face death to that close, you know you would know what you really want. And Steve went through that particular phase. He realized he had few things: the love towards Apple, Pixar's team, and Apple's team, and definitely the family. and that's the game changer which happened and that turned completely uh, shift to his uh, dimension around thinking and uh, it brought him sense of new energy and he started working even even harder uh, after that revelation and his chamber you know he went into chamber again and he started discussing uh, ideas with uh, Johnny Ive and he had every week a session around brainstorming ideas what is the future of apple what is the future of apple and there were only two companies in his mind the pixar who was the company who brought him to where he is right now and he wanted to give a tribute or he wanted to give a legacy to Ed Catman who was a co-founder of Pixar and John Lasseter who was the design head around uh, Pixar as well and he had an interesting conversation with uh, Bob Iger who was a Disney CEO he wanted to make Pixar's future secure first and uh, that's how he had a negotiated deal with Pixar where Pixar was proposed to be got bought to to the disney of around 7.8 billion dollar and that's where he secured the future of pixar and ed catmel john lasseter all of them were really really happy that uh, that deal closed a place where pixar has a roof forever because disney is a gigantic in that particular space and they have all the control to execute execute the innovations and the movies like toy story incredibles all the things you see right now is because pixar has complete control around around the animation studio the studios of 